freemmostation.com. Welcome back, Station. I'm Skyline Shore, and I'm excited to talk to you about some of the best MMOs out there today. But specifically, action combat MMORPGs. So while these are all very good for many different reasons, the PvP in each game is either a main focus or a great addition and outshines most or just all other current generation MMOs, player versus player combat. So remember that these are all free to play, so they are safe to test for yourselves. Anyways, let's get on with the show with our number 10. Number 10. Outlaws Online has many, many, many unique and small twists to the genre, but really it gets overshadowed by the fact that it is aesthetically and mechanically similar to the World of Warcraft. Uh, some may see this as bad, and some may see it as good, but when it comes to the PvP, really it's all very good. In all the ways that it is similar to World of Warcraft, it is done very well, and in every aspect that it deviates, it carves out its own niche in the free-to-play market. Combat is like to World of Warcraft, non-standstill action combat, though it is still a bit floaty. Where Outlaws really shines is its PvP content, with a plethora of different arenas and areas to fight in, as well as epic ship versus ship endgame. There's different classes and roles to play, so teamwork is on a heavy emphasis here, so get the most out of your PvP experience, roll with friends, and have a good time. Number 9 Dragon's Prophet is really a unique game with a lot of potential. The ability to tame dragons, which can be used for combat, has many fans pretty much already endeared to the title. Uh, this game is more arcade influenced uh, than most, but still the combat is accurate and impactful. A bit floaty and somewhat similar to the WoW formula, the combination of different classes and different dragons makes for interesting one-on-one -on -one fights, let alone the team fights. But really, the biggest factor in adding it to our list was the Frontier System, where players fight in conquest over an archipelago of islands located above the world. There they can create housing, formulate an economic system to sustain the islands, and also bolster defenses to protect the conquered lands. Dragon's Prophet is definitely a unique take, it's definitely a good game to play. Number 8 Neverwinter Dungeons and Dragons. It has a mix of PvP elements from different genres that I think really meshes well with the game design as a whole. Its PvP is arena based which really fits perfectly with the combat style of the game since it is a dungeon running game. It is very team oriented though, with each class having entirely separate movement mechanics and spells to really provide support or damage in battle. With a comical atmosphere, fighting in Neverwinter really is just pure fun. Though I think with the atmosphere that it presents, I think a lot of hardcore players will also find a home here as well. Number 7 So C9 is an eastern based MMORPG and it has some of the most explosive spells and combos that you can get in a game. This MMO is solo friendly and it has 1v1 arenas which are just absolutely ridiculous with shockwaves and blades pretty much just flying everywhere. It's eastern influenced so you can expect fantastic mobility and very well done animations. If you're looking for a spectacle fighter disguised as an MMO, you should try out Continent of the Night. Number 6 Age of Wushu, also known as Age of Wulin, owns its place on this list due to different reasons than any other game here. The game's mechanics could be considered standstill, though that's not entirely true. The combat is just very strategic and a little bit sticky, so trading the floaty combat as we've seen in games like World of Warcraft and a little bit of the action, it really gains in return a more decisive and strategic formula which really fits perfectly with the theme of the game. Age of Wushu has open world PvP that meshes very well with the lore and the class systems with certain possibilities including, but not limited to, kidnapping and also persistent worlds where the players actually remain after logging out. This particular MMO has a strange and foreign approach that many players are very much enjoying right now, and I think you would as well. Number 5 Vindictus is made by Nexon, same company behind Dragon's Nest, and overall, the game feel is almost identical, actually. However, the aesthetic is far more horror-based, and the abilities and spells are a bit more aggressive. So while it does vary slightly from the Dragon Nest formula, Vindictus is still a great title that has been bringing in thrill-seeking adventures since release. The combat is far more melee based than a lot of other games, but it still holds its grip as one of the best PvP experiences inside an MMO which already the PvE content holds its ground entirely. Number 4 Dragon's Nest! A dungeon crawling MMO that I personally love and it has some of the best animations really aside from its sister title Vindictus. 
Nexon has done a great job at creating epic and unique abilities between the different classes, and there's a lot of different classes and a lot of different specializations, so yeah, it's really crazy. And this really, really comes out when fighting in the arenas. The smoothest action combat of any game, period. It also has a good bit of flavor with the different game modes that they have. Uh, one is even an infection game mode, where players as they die turn into ghouls, which then infect other players. So while the game is very much co-op based with team play and also PvE team play, you can also expect a scene for solo queuing, 1v1 arenas, and also in regards to PvE, which is competitively tracked with an arcade scoring system. All in all, I think Dragon's Nest has a place for everybody, just give it a shot, it's free to play. Go have fun. Number 3 Star Wars The Old Republic is very much like World of Warcraft, and for that reason, it is actually our number 3. The variety of spells, 1. The map design, 2. The team emphasis, 3. Everything comes together well to make a great experience for players looking to fight. And while the game also has a rich PvE environment, the PvP certainly holds its weight. While the fights are arena based, expect to see more squad play than in most other games in the same niche. And while a bit floaty, the customization of character skills and abilities makes PvP rewarding and entirely worthwhile. Number 2 Let's talk about Rift. Rift is an explosive game and it holds true to really a very old and a little bit dated formula in MMOs, but it works here. The game has many classes, many abilities, and a skill ceiling worthy of the genre. It's a fantastic world to immerse yourself in, hands down, and the player versus player content is extremely team based. As well, character customization is also important and an included mechanic. Rift has been continually polishing itself and is only getting better with time. So while not wholly unique in many of its ideas, it's the small changes and it's the polish that's really setting it apart from the majority of the free-to-play MMOs out today. And number one. Guilds across the globe have been thriving in the Terra scene. Fights require you have cunning, strength, and confidence. And while the questing is extremely lackluster, the endgame dungeons are fantastic and in that same respect, the endgame PvP is pure joy to so many fans playing now. The combat is action-based and aimed, meaning similar to Dragon's Nest, you must actually target your spells manually and strategically block or dodge. And as a free-to-play, it has a level of originality and polish just completely unparalleled. The PvP is actually very similar to other games, but the skill ceiling is far greater with the skill shots required and the reaction timing needed to survive. Looking at the graphics, they're gorgeous. They're just gorgeous, and the world itself is completely novel. Classes and class mechanics are also very unique, and when it comes to PvP, these systems really shine. Play with friends, and if you join a guild, you're gonna have the greatest time ever. Terra is a game not to be taken lightly, and because of this, it suffers a bit to the casual crowd. However, if you are someone who considers themselves a hardcore player killer, join the ranks and have a blast. Terra is a worthwhile MMO to pretty much anybody, and especially in those in favor of action combat and team play. Thank you very much for checking out our top 10 for PvP and MMORPGs. Remember, this was specific to RPGs, so Planicide 2 didn't make it. But remember that this list was also very hard to organize because of the varying styles of PvP found in each game. Some are arena based, some are open world PvP, so just keep that in mind. Each of these games are really worthy of play regardless. But let us know what you think in the comments below, and we will see you again next time. Thanks for watching again, I'm Skyland Shore with Free MMO Station, bye guys. This is another free-to-play MOBA and the studio expects the two games to compete between